Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us for another Michaels Community Classroom. I know you all are here on I Love Yarn Day because you love yarn and you love stitching and we're so excited to be here with you. Uh, my name is Allie W. I'm from Yarnspirations and I'll be helping moderate today's class with the lovely Tamara from Moogly Blog. Uh, we're so excited to be here, just another great class love learning from Tamara. So we're just so excited to be here. Um, another just fun little thing for you today is Michaels has created a super fun I Love Yarn Day logo for you to use. Um, you can put it in your Cricut machine, you can print it out, you can put it on a t-shirt, just really fun. So I've dropped that in the chat there. Um, I will also be dropping the link to the pattern in chat right now just in case you don't have it already. Uh, but we're so excited to be here and stitching a really great project that could be um, an awesome project for gifting for the holiday season, I think. Absolutely. So hi, everybody. I'm Tamara from Moogly. And as she was saying, we're making a great gifting pattern, which is this hat. Um, but before we even get started with that, I just want to wish everybody a happy I Love Yarn Day. And I got to tell Allison, I didn't know about that Cricut thing. You got to send me that file. I have a Cricut. I need my own t-shirt and project bags, too. Absolutely. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a copy of it myself. But yeah, so happy. I love Yarn Day, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, today, we're going to be working on the Bernat Basic Crochet Ribbed Family Hat. Long name, and that's because it has three sizes that basically cover most of the family. All the way, there's three sizes, basically, like I said, there's two to four years, which you've got right here. There is six to 10 years right here. And then we've got adult. And the reason you can do, you know, three sizes like this and call it a full family hat is because these, the way this is formed, it's got so much stretch. You can see there's really good stretch here and it's just worked side to side and it's so fun. And it's also one of those patterns that would be really easy to adjust. If you don't feel like, you know, you'd fit in those sizes, you can definitely just add a few more rows and make it a little bit bigger around if you need to. So that's what we're gonna be making today. And I am gonna be demonstrating the smallest size. So make sure when you go to make this hat for yourself that you get um, the written pattern uh, for Michael's, your inspirations for this hat. And the great thing about this pattern is that the way they've laid it out, the different sizes are all color coded, which is so handy. So if you're making the child, um, what do they call them? I think they call them the child two to four year olds, child six to 10 and adult. So the baby, the child and the adult, depending on what size you're making, you can just follow those colors when the numbers differ. So that's really, really helpful. The other thing I want to point out is that this hat is made in really lovely Bernat, uh, Bernat Softy Chunky, as you can see right here. And this is a really great yarn. It is a six, a super bulky. And um, one of the things though about this yarn is that it does come in several different size balls. So you need to check, always make sure and check your yardage when you're going to make a pattern because yarn does come in different sizes and you want to make sure if that pattern says, you know, to use one ball, that you're getting the same size ball. So if you're finding these smaller skeins, like I'm holding right here, that are, let me find the exact ounces here, 3.5 ounces. These are, um, you're going to need probably two of these if you wanna make the pom-pom for the hat, um, possibly three for some of the larger sizes. I've only made the smaller size myself. Um, but if you're getting the bigger sizes, you can probably go ahead and get two or more hats out of there. So again, you'll just need to check the yardage for the ball you're buying to make sure that you've got enough to make your project. Always good advice. So, like I said, this is a really fun and unique hat. And most hats, um, when we talk about crocheting a hat, you might talk about top down or bottom up. This hat's actually made side to side. You can see here, it's made in rows that go back and forth, and then we seam it up and then add that pom-pom. And it's a little easier to see on the bigger one rather than the baby one here. I'll hold up this big full size. You can see it's really long, so you can just fold that brim right on up like that and get that really great sort of traditional looking Christmas hat. And then of course, you've got your pom-pom right on top that you can make with the yarn, or you can, you know, there's so many other fun pom-poms you can add to hats these days, mix up the colors and really have a lot of fun with it. So in addition to the yarn, you're going to need an L eight millimeter hook, which I've got right here, or whatever hook size gets you gauge. Um, the gauge is listed in the pattern, eight single crochets, nine rows is four inches. Now it's not listed in the pattern, but the other thing I do suggest you have on hand is stitch markers. And whenever you are working a pattern, it's always just really helpful to have stitch markers. I always like marking the first and last stitch of every row. Um, it really makes um, just a little bit easier to find those stitches. 
But for this pattern in particular, I really like the idea of marking the fifth stitch of each row. Um, well, depending on what size you're making. But basically, you'll see here in a moment when we get started, and I'll be demonstrating the stitches. There's a point in every row where you change over one type of stitch to the other. And if you want to relax and, you know, while you're making this hat, you might be a little distracted by a TV show or something, that stitch marker will help you keep track so you don't end up switching at the wrong spot. So that's another thing that can be really helpful if you have those available. So, of course, you can also use scissors. And then if you want to make your own pom-pom, you can do the hand method. You can use a variety of different pom-pom um, makers. But however you like to do that is up to you. So for now, let's go ahead and come over here to the overhead camera. I've got to move it over here in front of me, so bear with me just a minute here, and we'll get this all lined up so I can demo for you today. Awesome. So let's go ahead and open up our yarn, and while I get this going, Allison, do we have any questions? I don't see any questions here in the chat right now. Okay, great. Um, I believe they'll be putting links to the pattern in the uh, count the chat there. So hopefully you need to scroll up down a little bit. That should be in there here soon. So to begin this hat, like I say, the instructions, now that we can see the instructions overhead here a little bit, we can see those three colors. Uh, it looks like pink or red for the smallest, yellow for the med medium size, and then green for the largest. So today we're going to go ahead and just work on the smallest size, the two to four year, because it's a little bit easier to demo um, and a little quicker to demo. But really this pattern is so similar no matter what size you're making. So let's go ahead and start with a slip knot on our hook. And one thing to note with this pattern is that the chain two at the beginning of the first row is not going to count as a stitch. So I've got my slip knot on my hook and I'm going to start the smallest size by chaining 23. So you can go ahead and chain for whatever size you want to make. If you are making the medium size, it starts with 28. If you're making the largest dot size it starts with 32. So again if you like a really long hat or a shorter hat you can always play with those numbers as well. Um, for any experienced crocheter you're going to see this pattern is very easy to personalize and adjust a little bit for you. So let's see here now that I've been chatting it makes it a little bit harder to count so let's count and see how many we've got here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, so just three more to go for me for the smallest size. Oops, fell right off my hook there because I need to pull up a little bit more yarn. There we go. All right, now with that, we move to the second page of our instructions and we're going to make the first row which is made from the right size. So you can work along with me if you like or you can just watch, it's totally up to you. But for the first row, we're going to work a half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. And where you work into the chain is a very personal thing. A lot of people like to work under those top two loops like you normally do when you're working into any other stitch. But when I'm working my first row, I like to work into that back hump right here on the back of those Vs because this leaves those two loops there unworked, so to speak. Nothing's been stitched into them. And it makes it a lot easier to seam together this hat at the end. And it also leaves a nicer finished edge when it's an edge that you're not going to work back into. So whatever you like to do is totally up to you. But like I say, we're going to start with a half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So we count those out, one, two, three, and put our half double crochet there. And as I say, that's going to count then as our first stitch. That chain, those two chains we skipped don't count. So I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker in there just to help remind me that's exactly where I want to end when I come back for the second row. So then we're going to half double crochet in each of the next 15, 19 or 22, depending on the size you are making. So for me, since I'm making the smallest size, that would be the next 15. So a total of 16 half double crochets. So we'll just start working those across. And I'll go ahead and work a half double crochet here a little slower in case you're a new crocheter or just learning, haven't made this one before. It's a fantastic stitch. You yarn over, go into the next stitch or whatever stitch you're trying to go into, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again and pull through all three loops. So a little, little bit more than a double crochet or a single crochet, a little bit less than a double crochet. And it sits at about the same height, right in between those two. So we just continue to make our half double crochets here for your size. A pretty simple pattern. So I hope everybody's doing okay today and enjoying this 
fall weather and looking forward to hat season and sweater season and all the yarny season making handmade gifts and uh, if you get a chance to jump into the chat and tell us where you're tuning in from today it's always fun to see where everybody's from so i'll just continue making my half double crochets here and basically oh there went my dog must be somebody walking by sorry about that i don't know if you guys can hear my dog from there uh, hi everybody from virginia i see in charlotte north carolina that's awesome so like i say this is a, the big chunk of the hat here for the first row and we're going to keep doing this until we get to the last five six or seven stitches and this is where i was talking about we'd have that big chain change over between the types of stitches so let's see here pull up a little bit more yarn from my lap and i've got one two three four five stitches left and again if you were working the medium size the older child size that would be six stitches left and for the large size that is seven stitches left so what we're going to do is now we're just going to uh let's see work a single crochet <laughs> sorry i'm really hoping one of my family gets the dog soon sorry about that guys so basically we're going to work a single crochet in each of the last stitches there so it's the last five stitches for the small size, six for the medium, or seven for the large. So we'll just work our way across. And that is it. Those are how simple the stitches for this pattern is, really, until we get to the very end. So that is our row one, like that. So you should have a total of 21, 26, or 30 stitches total, and then you should have 15, 19, or excuse me, 16, 20, or 23 of them in half double crochet, and then the last five, six, or seven in single crochet. So for our second row, or excuse me, our second row, we're gonna chain one, and now we're gonna work in the front loops only. So if we look at the top of one of our stitches here, you can see we've got the two loops of the V there that make up the top of a stitch. The front loop is always the loop that's closest to you, the crocheter. And the back loop is always the one that's always furthest away. So this will change if you flip this over. Now this is the front one and this is the back one. So it's always relative to you. So it's not something that stays on here. It's your relationship to the project. So to crochet in the front loop only, basically, let me go ahead and pull that loop out of the way here. I'll pull this up a little closer. So to go under the front loop only, you literally just come right up in the middle of that V and just go under that loop that's closest to you. If we were to go in the back loop only, we'd go in the middle of the V and just come up under that back loop. So for this row though, we're going to be working in those front loops. So let me get, my, get the yarn back on my hook here. And we're going to start with single crochets in those first five, six, or seven stitches again. So again, anytime you're working the stitches now from the rest of this pattern, if you're working into a single crochet, you work a single crochet. If you're working into a half double crochet, you work a half double crochet. So that's another good visual cue for you too. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and start row two. We've got our chain one and working to the front loops only, we're going to single crochet in each of those first five, six or seven stitches. So we'll insert our hook right there under that front loop, yarn over, Pull that loop through, yarn over again, and finish our single crochet. So that's one. Let's do the next one. We go right in and pull that out of the way again so you can see I'm under just that front loop. So I can yarn over and pull that loop up and through, yarn over, and pull through to finish the single crochet. So that's the first two. There's the third one. And if you kind of hold your stitches so that you know, normally when you'd hold it, you might sandwich it like this. They can go under both. If you hold it so that just that first one sort of presents, that can make it a little easier too, to get under just that one loop and make those first five single crochets. Again, it'll be six if you're making the medium, seven if you're making the larger size. So then we do the same thing by working half double crochets the rest of the way across. But this time, we're not going to be working into the front loop only. We're going to be working into the horizontal bar it is created below the stitch in the previous row. So let's talk about how half double crochets are made for just a minute. I've got a yarn over here. I'm just gonna go into this stitch like I normally would and pull up a loop. And when I finish that half double crochet, if you watch really closely, when I yarn, yarn over and pull through, 
that that first yarn over I did, the one right there in the middle, let me try and get the right angle there. There we are, that one. That's going to create a horizontal bar in the stitch. So if I pull that through, you can see right there, there's that top B that we normally have at the top of our stitch. And if you look at the body of our stitch right underneath it, there's that bar right there that was created with the yarn over. And that's the bar we want to work into for the rest of these stitches across. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one out because it wasn't in the right place. And then we want to look for that horizontal bar in the next stitch, the one right below the top V right there in front. So when we yarn over and go under it, that one, sort of think of it as coming sort of as the bottom up under it there, like so. Then we yarn over and pull our loop through and finish our half double crochet just as we normally would. Then you can see those top two loops are pushed to the front of the fabric. And that's part of what is going to give our hat its really great sort of ribbed look. So that's how you work the rest of these stitches across. So let me do another one here, try and get it a little bit closer. There we are. So I yarn over, I find that horizontal bar right there, right below the top V. So if you're having trouble finding it, just go back and find that top V at the front and then sort of mark where that front loop is and then turn it over and find the loop right below it in front, right there. So let's do another one of these just as slow as I can here. We'll yarn over, go under that front loop right there, yarn over again, pull it up under that loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. So it's a normal half double crochet, it's just that you're inserting your hook in a different part of the stitch. So we yarn over, go under that loop at the front for the next stitch, pull up our loop, and then we can yarn over and finish our half double crochet. And we just continue on across just like that for the rest of our stitches for row two. So I'll pull up a little bit more yarn here. And I'll come back and make an extra with you too. So if you didn't catch some of that, although it's gonna be a lot similar to this one, it's just going to be from the other end. So for your row two repeats, which we're making right now, we start with half double crochets in the front loop, and then we finish with half double crochets in that front horizontal bar. So if you can imagine what we're gonna do for the next row after having made the first one, It'll be the same thing, just working in the opposite direction, of course, starting with half double crochets and finishing with single crochets. So, Allison, did we have any questions? Let me take a look. I know there was one question about making this hat in a size for a baby, and I do think mm -hmm. with the super bulky yarn, mm -hmm. It might be a little hard. Yeah, I think I think that's a good point. Um, I think the super bulky would be difficult, but I do think it's a relatively simple pattern. Here's the baby size. And I think if, or well, it's more of a two to four year old size, I suppose. But I think if you made this pattern um, with per, perhaps Bernat Soft, or excuse me, um, Red Heart Soft, or I'm trying to think some of the other, oh, let me think. Like a Karen Simply Soft yeah. or? Karen Soft or Red Heart with Love, or um, just, you know, regular, uh, I'm trying to think, Bernat, does Bernat Softy have a worsted? There's so many. There's um, Softy Baby Chunky as oh, well, there which you is go. a size five. Yeah, perfect. So that might be a good substitute because this yarn is a size six. So um, yeah, you might want to try a little bit thinner yarn and, you know, just take a few rows, see what size you're getting. Um, it's a pretty pretty simple pattern as you can see. So then you can add a couple more rows or a couple more stitches to adjust it a little bit to fit whatever head you're working towards. Were there any other questions I could answer? Uh, let me take a look. Okay. I did see one pop up and say how many stitches. So depending on the size you're making, it will be the same number of stitches in every row. So for this, again, for the smallest size, that's 21 stitches in every row. For the medium, it's 26. And for the largest, it is 30. So 
when we get to the end here, I just want to point out too, remember we said that chain two that we skipped at the beginning, those two last two chains we made that we skipped when we made our first half double crochet. You can see right there's the marked stitch. That's where we marked. That's the last stitch we work into. We do not work into those two chains that we skipped at the beginning. So you can see I marked that stitch, but the stitch marker is still there because we worked into that horizontal bar in front of it. Oh, Erna had a great question here. Um, do you want your chains to be tight? Uh, not particularly, no. Um, you want to, uh, if you find that your chains do tend to be a little bit tight, you can go up a hook size if you need to. But I would just keep your hook, uh, your chains, <clears throat> excuse me, just uh, your standard tension, uh, just as relaxed as you normally would for this hat. You don't want them, um, you know, to tighten up and just, you know, warp the hat at all. Uh, this hat's going to, as you can see here, move and stretch a little bit. So you'll want to keep your chains, just your, your usual looseness, your usual gauge tension. Same as for the rest of the hat. Okay, so, and somebody just said, is the horizontal bar one or two loops? It's officially, I guess you could say, it's the one loop in the front is the one you're working into, but there is a horizontal bar on the back. But for, for this pattern, we're not touching that. We're only working into the horizontal bar that's in the front of the stitch, the side facing you. Okay, so I think let's go ahead and start our row three. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our third row is going to start with a chain two, but again, just like when we did our chain two at the beginning, uh, those first two chain twos we skipped at the beginning of our first row, those don't count as a stitch. So when I'm making half double crochets, I find that this is where I'm going to disagree with myself. I just said make your chains the regular size. For me, I like to make these two chains just a little bit tighter than I normally would because my half double crochet isn't quite as tall as two chains. So I find if I go ahead and make these two chains a little bit tighter than I normally would, it works out really nicely. And I'm not going to be working back into these, so I don't have to worry about, you know, getting into the right size, you know, getting, getting them the right size to work back into or anything. So after we've got our chain two, we're ready to work back here in the other direction. And now we're going to be working that half double crochet into the horizontal bar again. So we flipped our work over, but now we've got this horizontal bar in front of us right here. So we're gonna go ahead and yarn over. And let's go ahead, and I'm gonna try and pull it up real close to the camera here, if I can get it to focus. Give it a second here. The joys of Wi-Fi, all right. So we can see right there, there is that horizontal bar that we're working into for this. So I've already got my yarn over on my hook. So I'm just gonna try and slip my hook tip right through just under that bar. So if I pull that yarn out of the way here, if I flip it over, those top two loops are still there on top of the stitch. I haven't worked into those at all. So then I can yarn over, pull that loop up and through, and then just yarn over and pull through to finish the half double crochet just as I normally would. Now this is my new first stitch of the row. So again, depending, if you like to use stitch markers, it's fine to go ahead and put that stitch marker right back in there. I'm a big, big fan of them. So then, and I do want to point out one little bit that's tricky here. When we look for that horizontal bar, there's another one right there that can get a little confusing. If I pull it up really closely, hopefully we can see it right there. I try and separate them just a little bit. So that one, as you're working across, can get a little bit confusing. It can um, start to look like maybe that's one you should be working into. So if you have trouble like that, again, just always go back to the top of the stitch there we are. So we can find those two loops for the, the top V and then find that horizontal loop right in front. That's the one right there that we are going into, not the one that's right underneath it, right there. So let's do that again here real close. I'll yarn over, find that next horizontal bar right there, right under just that particular loop. All the rest is behind the hook. Completely ignore it and make our half double crochet. There we are. So to begin our row three repeat here, you can see we're just gonna keep making these for a little bit. And basically another 16 of these, or well, depending on your size, either 16, 20 or 22, or 23, excuse me, uh, and then finish up with the single crochets in the front loop only. 
for those last few stitches, however many for your size. There is a written pattern and um, Allison, have you been able to drop that into the chat? Yes, I will drop it into the chat again here as well. Okay. Great. Okay, let's do, let's do this one again real slow. For those who need to see it, we'll yarn over. There's the horizontal loop. We see the top two loops on top. We come to the one right in front. You can see it almost makes it look like another V there in front. So it can be a little confusing, which is why it's always good to reorient yourself there. You can go right under just that loop. There we are. And then yarn over and pull through and make the half double crochet. So you can see on this side, it looks smooth, but on this side, that top V has been pushed to the back of our fabric. And that's gonna create that texture. And if we look here on this side, where we're working now, you can see in the previous rows how that's been pushed forward right there. So that creates that really big ribbed look we're going for. So yay, I'm glad you guys are liking that stitch. Thank you. So the horizontal bar is not the same as the front loop. Again, if we look at the top V there, right there is the top of our stitch. We've got our back loop, we've got our front loop, and then I'm gonna hold onto the front loop as we flip this over. You can see this loop underneath right here, kind of running out little fingers. This loop right here is that horizontal loop that we're going to be working into, not the front loop. So, that is one of the fun things about crochet. As long as your hook can go in there, you can make a stitch up. <laughs> Were there any other questions or did somebody need to see that maybe a little slower? Or? So there was a question um, a little bit earlier about uh, why, are, why do you switch to the single crochets at the end? Ah, great question. Well, let me put this down for a second. I'm gonna pull up our baby hat here. It's a little easier to get on camera. Here are those half double crochets. You can see that ridge there with those top two loops pushed forward or back, depending on your perspective. And then up here, I pull it right up close. You can see this is our single crochets. Now we're working into just that front loop. So that leaves that back loop to create the ridge there on the back of the fabric. And that, the shorter stitches, are what helps create the crown shape for the hat. So if I bring up, I actually have one here that's ready to seam. So I wasn't sure how many rows would get made on our little sample here today. And I wanted to make sure to go over that. This is what the finished smallest size, the two to four year old one looks like before you've done any seaming. So we can see here, here's all those half double crochet sections. And up here, this is all the single crochet sections. And it just makes it a little bit smaller here at the top so that when we seam it, if I flip it over here, you can see it starts to bring it in just a little bit more for that shape. These are just a little bit shorter here then at the end of this rose so that we can gather that up for our finished hat. So if I hold those next to each other, you can see how much those single crochet stitches really pull in for the top of the hat. And then of course, some of that can get covered by your pom-pom if you want a pom-pom. So we've got that going, but we'll try and get through at least one completion of row three here, so. Uh, any other questions I can ask while I'm showing off these stitches? Or answer rather, not ask. <laughs> okay, yes, no? All right. So we'll continue across here until we get to those. I'm so sorry. I was on mute because I was taking a sip of water. <laughs> well, that's okay. um, why so there is a question here about whether it matters if you leave a long tail at the start or um, a long tail at the end of the project for you know, seaming. And that's something I believe it did mention in the hat that I forgot to do. Um, did it mention this in the hat? No, it didn't. Sorry, I've been making a lot of projects lately. I apologize. I have to go back and check the uh, specific instructions. You don't, uh, oh yes, it does say to leave a 24 inch long tail for seaming later. Honestly, you're going to end up here, we'll pull up the finished one again real quick. You can see here, I still got the yarn attached. I didn't cut it off yet, but I did leave the 24 inch seam at the first one. It's, I mean, you're gonna be ending at the seam. So if you want to leave the 24 inch seam at the beginning, then you can sew it from the top down. If you leave the, if you forget to leave a 24 inch one, you can take your leftover yarn and seam it from the bottom up when you get to the end. So 
it's um i mean it's you know it's handy if you like sewing from um you know it doesn't really ultimately i think in the end matter uh you can seam it up either direction and then either uh cinch up the top before you do that seaming if you have the beginning end or um cinch it up at the end it'll work honestly either way so if you can remember to get that 24 inches at the beginning that's great but if you forget it don't worry about it don't pull, don't try and pull the hat out you can use your end tail to do the same seaming so okay see this is why I, if i were uh, watching this with some netflix or hulu or something i might go ahead and put a stitch marker in this stitch right here because this is our last half double crochet and this is where we switch back now to single crochets but just like the other single crochets, these are still gonna be worked in that front loop only. So let's go ahead and pull this up real close here and get a closer look at these stitches. We've got, and you can see this one's trying to pull a little bit for me because it's the next stitch and I, it wants to flip back with the others. But we've got our top two loops there of our V and that front loop only now is the one we're going to work into for those single crochets. There's not a horizontal bar from a yarn over so we just wanna go under that front loop only. So now we don't have to yarn over first. We just come up right in the middle. You can see it there, right in the middle of that stitch. So that back loop is hanging out there. We're just gonna ignore that one and put our single crochet right there. There we are. So then, and I really find if I hold it away from myself, you know, and for me, it's more like this, there we are then it's really easy just to go ahead and catch just that front loop as you make those last few single crochets all the way to the end of that row. So that is how you make row three and rows two and three are those repeats. That's it, you go back row two, front loop only single crochet in those first few stitches. When you switch over to half double crochet, then you work under that third loop in the front. So Allie, can you tell me how we're doing on timing so I can figure out if yes, demo it is, support? It is 447. Mm. So we have about 13 minutes left. Okay, well done. I have demoed all the stitches. You've seen them. How simple was that, right? Just front loop only single crochet and half double crochet in that third loop. So let's jump on over here. Here, let's say you have made all the rows for your hat. And the number of rows, of course, is going to depend on how many, um, you know, what size you're making. So, and if you wanted to make it a little bigger around, if you've got a little wider head or a little narrower, you can do that too. But for this one, I did manage to leave the uh, 24 inches at the beginning. So I can go ahead and cut my tail off a little shorter. But if you didn't leave 24 inches at the end, go ahead and cut your tail end off to 24 inches. Either one will be just fine. It's just gonna, uh, it just affects where you start your seaming. So I've cut that off. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull that tail end right through to secure here, like so, and set that aside. And this is where I wanna point out to you, this is one of those smaller skeins. So if I were making, I don't know, maybe a small pom-pom I could get out of this, but if you wanna make a nice, really generous pom-pom and you're getting the smaller size skeins, you'll definitely wanna make sure to get a second skein, even if you're making the smaller size of the hat. So once we've got that done, then we're going to want to pull up a yarn needle. So let me grab one of my larger ones here because we do have a larger yarn going here. And then we just go ahead and find that tail end and get that on our needle, like so. Now, oops, pulled the wrong end because I was trying to read the instructions at the same time. It says specifically, use the end from the foundation chain weave the yarn through the short side of the hat and gather the top of the hat together securely and then sew the center back seam. This yarn needle does not wanna let this yarn in. There we go. So again, if you end up using the other end to seam with, you could just seam up that side and then gather the top at the end. So don't let that, don't let that scare you too much. So the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is fold this hat on over. And then we need to gather up these short ends right here, all these single crochets. And just to answer Catherine's question real quick, you only chain two at the beginning of the row when it's the end that you start with the half double crochets. So this end down here, you chain two. When you're starting with a single crochet, you only chain one. So to weave in your uh, crown brim, there's several different methods to do this, but I'm going to show you guys the one I like best. I'm going to go ahead and start over here. I'm gonna go ahead and join to that one. That makes the most sense, right? Come over to the other side. And I'm just going to go sort of along the side, almost like you would with your hook if you were weaving, uh, working into the edges of something. And I'll just pull that yarn right on through there. 
And then I'm going to continue working my way around the hat, almost like a whip stitch, just going from the outside of the hat to the inside. And I'll try and catch, you know, basically every row or so, go through from the outside to the end all the way around. And as you go, just make sure to give your yarn a little bit of a tug and that will help cinch up that top too. And one of the other ways I've seen people do this is to weave back and forth from the rows, um, like in and out and in and out, sort of like a running stitch if you're familiar with that at all. But I find that when you do it that way, it causes sort of an unfortunate pucker sometimes in the top of a hat. Whereas this seems to gather it together just a little bit smoother. And I like the end look of it. But you know, there's no right or wrong in crochet most of the time. Uh, it's whatever works for you. So you can try a different method. If there's a method you love for cinching up the top of a hat, um, heck, share it with me. I'd love to know it too. Maybe it is better than this one, but for now, this is the one I like the best. So we just pull through from the outside and keep giving little tugs to cinch it up as we go. I definitely, I will say I was just seeming a pumpkin and <laughs> it was puckering very badly at the top. This actually would have worked a lot better. So yeah. <laughs> I learned it the hard way. We'll put it that way <laughs> from experience. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you for mentioning pumpkins because I wanted to talk about uh, this method on something else coming up. And I, uh, I was trying to think what else besides the top of hats would you do this for? But pumpkins, of course. There we go. I was like, there's got to be something else. I know there's other stuff. Sorry. There we go. So yeah, I just continue working my way around here. There are a total of, oh gosh, well, you know what? In this pattern too, I will say this pattern doesn't tell you to work to a particular row. Um, although you do want to end on a second row repeat, you work to a measurement. So that's really nice too. I like uh, patterns like that because um, they're a little bit more forgiving for your personal gauge and tension. And this is a really great hat for beginners. Um, and, you know, tension and gauge can be an issue, especially when you're first getting started. So we're getting a little further along. So I just want to give this a really, really good gather here. And I don't want to pull so hard that I break the yarn. And keep in mind, too, that your pom-pom will hide a lot, of, a lot of sins on the top of a hat. I think that's one reason we all love them, because sometimes the top can get awkward, depending on the pattern. Sometimes those gathers get a little crazy. Sometimes the stitches want to stick up funny, but when you put a pom-pom on top, all that just disappears. So we're almost all the way around. It's just taking me a few minutes here. And I've got just a few more rows here to work into. So this is essentially sort of like a whip stitch, but we're only working through one layer. So if you are a new crocheter, or you haven't done much seaming before, whip stitch is essentially the same, except I would have been going through two layers to seam two things together. So when it comes to sewing that center back seam, we can do it this way, or we can do any of the, uh, any of the other stitches that work well for this. So I've got, let's see, I've got all the way around and I can keep pulling and get that really, really tight, as tight as I can get it here. And then you can always, like I say, if you want to go back through, after you're done, you can go back and sort of sew those together a little bit with a few extra stitches. This is a really chunky, bulky yarn, so it doesn't want to pull quite as tight in the center, but that's okay. We can finagle that later, especially with the pom-pom on top. So let's go ahead and get to the seam because I really want to make sure we get to this here before we run out of time today. So as I said, you can do two seams together, just match up your stitches. And normally, if we weren't running out of time, I would use stitch markers to match up those stitches all the way down. Maybe not every one, but every few to make sure I match up all my stitches all the way to the bottom of the hat so I don't accidentally leave one behind. But for the sake of time, we're gonna go ahead and just get to it. So I'm going to go ahead and put my needle right under the top two loops of both of those stitches and pull it through. And then I can bring it back to in front of me and sit it right under those two stitches and pull it through, <clears throat> excuse me. Same thing again, just match up and go through one stitch from each side and your seam should be perfectly even. So this right here, this method is called the whip stitch. I'm gonna show you one other method real quick here. We're just gonna pretend we've been doing it this whole time called the mattress stitch and this is another alternative. For the mattress stitch, we go under one side at a time 
and from the back. So back here is our first side. I would come from the back through that stitch and then from the back of the stitch on the opposite side. The only tricky part with that one is you have to make sure not to accidentally put a knot in your yarn, but you can pull it through. And that creates yet another type of seam. So you can play with this a little bit because you can always go back and pull those little stitches out. So we've got a cut piece of yarn here. If you don't like it and try a different kind of seam, but that just gives you an idea. We've got some whip stitch seam and some mattress stitch seam. Either one works perfectly fine. You just seam right along to the bottom then, weave in your ends. And of course, if you ended up having to use this end to seam it up, then you would do that back seam first and then gather up the top. And then you can, like I say, weave in those ends and add this really gorgeous pom-pom. So there are instructions. Oh, and you can slip stitch it together. If you prefer uh, to use your crochet hook, you can slip stitch the seam together. Uh, if you wanted to do that, you would probably wanna go ahead and use that final end to do that seaming. So you could slip stitch up the seam of the hat and then break your yarn to gather up the crown. But yes, sure, absolutely. Um, it's a very, very simple hat idea that I think you can, you know, sort of play with and definitely make your own. And then, like I say, add a gorgeous pom-pom if you want to. There are instructions in the written pattern right here on how to make a pom-pom by hand. Um, but if you want to, I know Michaels has um, great pom-pom makers that you can try out. And then, of course, there's really fun poms that you can get on the market and add, um, you know, the faux fur ones and all the really colorful ones, too. So you can really sort of, yes, make it for the whole family, but uh, personalize it for your family members, too. And, of course, Burnett Softy Chunky comes in lots of really great colors. So I think we're done with the overhead camera. I'm going to go ahead and start sliding this one off hopefully without making you too dizzy. Thanks, Felicia. <laughs> All right, so there we go. So yeah, that's how to make this really fun hat. I think it's gonna be great for gifting and I wanna thank you so much for joining me for I Love Yarn Day. Awesome, thank you so much, Tamara. And we had such a great class. Just as a reminder to everybody, I will drop the link in the chat here, but you can find this recording available on Monday at the link that I've just dropped in chat. And we're so excited to be able to have you today and um, celebrating I Love Yarn Day with us. And don't forget to join us for more Michael's Community Classrooms. We have classes every week, so please check back, see what what other classes you might want to take with us. But thank you so much, Tamara, for today. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. Happy awesome. I Love Your Day. <laughs> Happy I Love Your Day, everyone. Bye.